looking forward to me on your welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the end of the year book tag. And since it's the end of the year, it's getting like cold and windy oh, where I am. So I apologize in advance for wind noise. I don't know exactly like how this is going to sound until after the fact. But if you're watching this video, then that means that I decided not to slap it. So, yay. Anyway, as per usual with all my previous book tags, I have the questions real on my notebook. So let's just get this party started. The first question is, are there any books that you've started that you need to finish? No, because if I start a book, I usually finish it within one or two sittings, or I decide to DNF it. So, no. The second question is, do you have an autumnal book to transition to, to the end of the year? Not really, because I'm not really a, like, seasonal fetal. I'm only a seasonal by default like for example cemetery boys came out the beginning of september and that's when i read it because that's when it was available on libby because that's that was its release date so i'm only a seasonal reader like by default because that's when books are coming out because like if cemetery boys had come out like in the summer or something like that it would have been i feel like less marketable you know what i mean so no, I'm not a seasonal reader because I don't purposefully read or seek out fall books when it is fall or I don't only read spooky books when it's Halloween or something like that but like I just tend to read books like when they're coming out so like I don't do it on purpose it's just when the books are coming out if that makes any sense so I don't know why I added all that additional information about whether or not I'm a seasonal beetle. Either it had nothing to do with this question at all. But like, welcome to my channel. The third, third question is, are there any new releases that you're still waiting for? Yes, there are about seven new releases that I'm still waiting for, I think, which I'll put up here. But you've also already seen them because they're the thumbnail for this video. So I believe half the books in the picture come out today. Because when I'm filming this, I'm filming this the 24th of October, I believe. So Halloween is next week. But when you're watching this, it's the 17th of November. And I know for sure that these violent delights is in that photo. Because I'm so, so excited for that. That is my most anticipated November release. And I'm so, so excited for it. And I can't stop seeing it on my Twitter timeline. And I'm just so, so excited for it. So basically, that's the one that I'm most excited for. So that's the one that I'm going to talk about right now. These Violent Delights is this YA historical fantasy. And it's set in 1920s Shanghai and it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling, which sounds so, so, so cool. I love historical fantasies because that is a mixture of two of my favorite genres, fantasy and historical fiction. And I just love books set in the 1920s. And I honestly haven't read a whole lot of them. But ever since I read the Divino series, it just reminded me of, like, how atmospheric this 1920s all. If you know what I mean, I'm not super excited about the fact that it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Because Romeo and Juliet is just a story that I think is kind of stupid and ridiculous. So, there's that. But I just love, like, Shanghai, 1920s, historical fantasy, YA. I guess it sounds so, so cool. So, by the time that you're watching this, I probably will not have read it. Because since it's so popular, it probably has like a really long hold on it, on Libby. You know what I mean? So, maybe I'll read it in the next month or something like that. As for the other books in the photo, I don't know that much about all of them. I know that some of them, like Soul Swift, were supposed to come out earlier this year. Because I've already talked to them about them in previous videos. The only thing that I know about song is that it's a sapphic YA fantasy. As for the Curse of Roses, I think that's like inspired by like Portuguese folklore or something like that. I don't know that much. And I also know that like Rebel Sisters is a sequel that I'm excited for. So anyway, basically in the photo you can see that those are my most anticipated releases for the rest of the year. So yay. The next question is what are three books that you want to read before the year ends? So, aside from those in the photo that I just showed, three books that I want to read before the year ends, I don't really have any. Because I feel like most of the books that I want to read, I've already read. The only one that I do still want to get to is 
2 is Loveless by Alice Oseman because that is one of my most anticipated 2020 releases. But since that book is not out in any other countries other than the UK, and I would have to buy it online and get it shipped to where I am, I just don't want to do that because I'm cheap. As much as I think that Loveless will be a book that will be absolutely amazing, like I'm not willing to like buy it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't buy books, you know what I mean? Like, I borrow them from the library, and I have no idea when I'm actually going to get to Loveless, but that just makes me more and more excited for it, you know? So, anyway, I know that I'm not going to get to Loveless realistically by the end of the year, so to, this, to answer this question, I don't really have any books that I'm actually going to read before the year ends, aside from the ones in the photo. You know? So, yay. The sixth question, no, the fifth question is, is there a book that could so shock you and become your new favorite? So, probably These Violent Delights. I'm so excited for it. It just sounds so, so good. So, probably that one. I know I've already talked about it, but, yeah. The last question is, have you already started making leading plans for 2021? So, yes. I guess, because, like, on Goodreads, I have a list of books that I want to read, and, like, next to the book title and the author and everything is the release date. So I have an idea for every single week in January, like, in February, in March, in April, and, like, most of the months, like, what I'm going to read. So that's kind of how I plan my reading year for each year, you know? So, depending on how popular each book is, and how many people, like, want to get it, and how many people, like, request it before its release date, like, it all depends on that. Like, for example, Concrete Rose, written by Andy Thomas, is a highly anticipated book of 2021, which means that I probably won't personally get to it in January, because it will probably have, like, really long holds on it, but as for more, like, unpopular books that I'm looking forward to, but, like, less other people are looking forward to, I will probably read them, you know, know, like, within the week that they're out, you know what I mean? So, anyway, basically, my Libby has new releases the day that they they come out, which is how I get to new releases so, so quickly, you know? So, anyway, that's the end of this book tag. I hope that you gained some insight into, like, I don't know, something. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below what new releases you're looking forward to for the rest of the year. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. I tag anybody who hasn't participated in this tag yet. And yeah, see you next time.